All right, today we are working on uh, 2009 Saturn Outlook. Um, I'm going to be replacing the catalytic converters. Um, there's actually three converters in these types of cars. Um, uh, making this on the Outlook because there's not too many videos out there on Outlook, uh, nor is there a lot of videos on catalytic converters for these. Um, so I thought I'd give it a shot and film and kind of go over what's needed and where everything's at and terminology and what's what. Um, luckily, these are the same engines as the GMC Acadia, the Chevy Traverse, and the Buick Enclave. So exact same parts, exact same procedures. Uh, so if you own any of these cars, and I believe it's 2009s up to 15s or 16s, um, this is the same procedure. So if this engine looks familiar to you, or if you have one of these covers on your engines, um, then this might already look uh, familiar to you. Um, I was getting, this all started because about a month ago I was getting an error code, um, check engine, a P0420 I believe, uh, which points to bank one catalytic converter. Um, and I was told by my mechanic that a lot of times with GMs, um, especially the Saturns, that that most likely means that it is a catalytic converter. Could be an oxygen, uh, but most likely, um, at least in his opinion, it's a catalytic converter. And it is a very expensive fix. So, uh, being one like many who doesn't have uh, thousands of dollars to throw at a car, um, I looked into it to see how much would these parts be and how hard would it be to do myself. Uh, and after a lot of research, um, it actually didn't, in my opinion, didn't look too hard. Um, so I went ahead and started researching parts and see how much it would be. And originally I was going to get just the catalytic converter that was bad. Um, but when I found some good manufacturers online that made them very cheap, exact OEM replacements, um, I said, you know what, why not just get all three pieces and we'll replace everything. Then everything is brand new. Uh, my car is 10 years old now, about 145,000 miles, so it's only a matter of time that the others could start going bad and the oxygen sensors going bad, so why not just do it all now? Um, so when looking into these, um, you know, I started looking at places, you know, AutoZone, Pep Boys, um, even looking at the GM parts website. And on places like AutoZone and Pep Boys and stuff, each one of these parts was about $375. So I would have had to spend about, you know, roughly $1,100 to get all three. Now, granted, I only have an error code for one of them, which happens to be this guy here, uh, Bank One. Uh, so I could have gotten that and just did that and been done with it. But like I said, it's only a matter of time probably before the other one goes bad and then the next one goes bad. So on GM's website, uh, their parts website, each one of these was about $475. So now you're looking at about $1,300 in just parts. So I started researching some uh, aftermarket websites uh 1A Auto, Rock Auto, uh, and then eventually started looking on eBay and found a an exhaust company that sells exact OEM parts, um, exact replacements for extreme cheap. So I got this three-piece set with gaskets, nuts and bolts uh, for $250. That is less than what I would spend for just one individual part um, at an AutoZone or GM's website. Being that it was that cheap, that's when I said, you know what, let me just replace all three. Uh, I'm saving so much money. Let's just do it. Um, also, being that I'm back there, um, if there is an O2 problem or eventually O2 is going to go bad, let me get new ones of those. So I got two new downstream sensors. And in a minute, I'll show you where they're at and how you tell which is which. Um, and being that I'm replacing the catalytic converter that goes in the front by the radiator, uh, which is known as bank two, I said, I got to get in there to pull this old oxygen sensor out. Let me just get a new one. 
Then we'll have brand new everything. Now this car, the, the Acadias, the, the Outlooks, the Traverse, they have four oxygen sensors. I actually have one that's new that I got replaced last year, so I only need to replace three of the four. That's why there's only three here. But like I said, because I'm pulling all this out, throw new sensors in, new catalytic converters. And when I realized how much I was going to save on all this compared to anywhere else, I went ahead and ordered this new flex pipe or Y pipe. This is what connects all the catalytic converters together and then goes out through the muffler and out the back. Once again, I did not have to replace this, but because my car is 10 years old and this is very rusty, um, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and like I said, the amount of money that I'm saving, um, I said, you know what, let me go for it. This was about 160 bucks, 170 bucks. Um, so you can see this is what, as I said, connects all the catalytic converters. Um, this is where the front converter goes, the one by the radiator. Um, here's one of your oxygen sensors. That comes down. That's your other catalytic converter that comes out of uh, bank one by the firewall. Goes out through here, and then this attaches to the third catalytic converter, which then goes out to the muffler. So that's why there's, I said there's three pieces to the set. Um, I could have just replaced one, but I said, you know what? I'm going to replace all three. And this O2 sensor and this O2 sensor, these are the ones that are called downstream. Um, this one would be downstream bank one, downstream bank two. And I'll show you in a second what I mean. So those two are where these two are get connected. Uh, we have bank one, I'm sorry, bank one, bank two. You'll see what I mean. Uh, this one has this bracket on it, the other one doesn't, and that's for bolting it onto the engine block. Uh, you'll see that in a second. Um, and then this is the one where the piece goes out, comes into here, and this goes out a pipe out to the muffler. Uh, and this is just a little bar that hangs it underneath, supports it. Um, so yeah, like I said, this whole piece, gaskets, uh, these little metal O-ring gaskets are for where the two catalytic converters bolt into the exhaust manifold. So that's why they're a little bit different than the other ones. Um, packet of nuts and bolts and flat washers. Um, I believe you only need 14 for this total. And I think they actually sent me 16, which is nice. So you, if you lose a bolt, you lose a nut, a flat washer, you have extras. Um, in order to get the job done, um, you can see you don't need too many uh, sockets and wrenches. Um, I have a set of 13 millimeters, a uh, set of 15 millimeters, um, a 10 millimeter, and I have this 9 sixteenths. Um, I forget where that's from, but I'll, f I'll find out in a minute. And these are two different type of O2 centers in case you need them. Um, this one I got out yesterday. I was able to get out with this one. Um, it was a little too tight with this one. This one ended up working, but... I have both just in case. I think they run for, I don't know, 12, 15 bucks a piece. Not bad. Um, so the 13 millimeter you're going to need to use to unbolt where these guys bolt into the Y flex pipe. The 15 millimeter is going to be where this guy bolts into the end of the Y pipe and then bolts into the pipe that goes out to the exhaust 13 millimeter 15 millimeter is all you really need to do this and plus your oxygen sensor uh, socket as well I'm going to show you in a minute what the 10 millimeter is for a um, couple extensions in case you need them and so all together um, sensors catalytic converters flex pipe all together it was around $500 if I would have had this, if I would have bought these parts through Advanced Auto Parts, uh, Pep Boys, AutoZone, um, all these parts probably would have been close to $1,400, $1,500. If I would have bought them through the GM Parts website, closer to $2,000. So I did this all for $500, uh, doing it myself so there's no labor. And you got to remember, those prices are labor or parts alone. Um, you got to figure out what your mechanic charges an hour, or if you're going to a dealer, what a dealer charges. And, you know, I'd have to imagine that a local mechanic is probably 50, 60, 70 an hour. A dealership could be closer to 100. 
um, plus or minus. I'm not positive on that. I'm just making it up. But you take that labor times two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever it takes, um, you could be slapping on another several hundred dollars to the parts alone. So this is free labor by doing it yourself. Um, so let's go look at the engine and I'll explain um, what's what and where's where. Um, for a while, I was always baffled by what's bank one, what's bank two, um, what's upstream, what's downstream. Uh, sometimes when you're looking up parts online, sometimes they refer to these as left, right, or bank one, you know, like I said, bank one, bank two. And if you're not too well versed in car lingo, you may not know what it means. So after doing a lot of research, watching videos on these and really figuring out, um, as I said, in these typical uh, GM, uh, Outlook, Acadia, um, Traverse, and Buick Enclave, here I'm sanding at the grill. Um, just a quick thing on cylinders for these. So these are six cylinders. Uh, cylinder one is back left. Two is front left. Three back middle. Four front middle. Five back right and six front right. Wherever cylinder one is, that's considered bank one. Therefore, the other side is going to be your bank two. As I said, my code was throwing a catalytic converter bank one, which would be the catalytic converter back here, which, by the way, is almost impossible to get from through here, which is why we have to go, unfortunately, go underneath for. So uh, please exercise caution and be safe when you do this. Um, so that's bank one back here, bank two up front. Now, when we're talking upstream and downstream, upstream would be attaching basically to the exhaust manifold right before the catalytic converter. Um, not gonna, there's one, not gonna be able to see that one back there because it's too dark. But here's the exhaust manifold. You can see that bolt that bolt and that bolt down there. That's the three bolts that hold the catalytic converter to the exhaust manifold. And if I try to come over here and move these wires, that hole right there is where the oxygen sensor goes. And because that's before the catalytic converter, that's what's known as upstream. So that's upstream bank two. And then upstream bank one would be just over here, but you can't see it. Now also, Sometimes you'll see online when buying parts for these, you'll see a, a left side or right side. And now you're thinking, okay, well, I'm standing at the front of the car. What's left, right? Once again, after doing some research, it refers to as if you're standing here on the side of the car, driver's side. Now you have right and left. Or sometimes you'll see the terminology as firewall side, radiator side. The radiator side is the catalytic converter that's going to have that extra bracket on it that bolts to the engine block that's down underneath. Um, and then this one would be the other one. So once again, cylinders 1, 3, and 5, 2, 4, and 6. Because cylinder 1 is on this side, that's bank 1, which makes this bank 2. So now let's go down underneath, and I will show you what we're dealing with. I just kind of showed you where the nuts and bolts are on top of the catalytic converter. Sorry, light went out. So, here we are underneath. There's the bottom of the catalytic converter. That's where it bolts in to the start of the flex pipe. And that goes out the back and will attach to the other two. Here's the other oxygen sensor. Like I said, there's four. There's two upstream, two downstream. This would be bank two downstream. Downstream meaning after the catalytic converter. Catalytic converter, after. Like Because I'm replacing this whole flex pipe too, that's why I got a new sensor for here and then one in the back. There's one in the back also. That would be your other downstream. And right here is that bracket that bolts onto the engine block. That is also a 15 millimeter uh, bolt. Now, to make this easier, too, um, instead of getting up in here with a wrench to remove all these oxygen sensors, I'm already removing this. 
So when I pull this out, I'll just leave that intact and then take it off over on the table so that I don't have to worry about a special socket just to get it out. I can use any type of uh, wrench or pliers. And then vice versa, I'll attach the new ones before putting this back in, or at least try to, um, to make it less work to do under the car. So this one and the far one in the back, which is this guy here, sorry about the blurriness, um, those you can get to fairly easy because you don't really have to get underneath the car. You really only have to get your head and your arm underneath. Um, it's the one back that's up here that is going to be uh, tough to get to, and I uh, really have not fully analyzed how we're going to get to that, but we're going to figure that out. So coming out, let's just go around and show you what we're talking about here. Um, so, this is where the Y piece comes back, ends, and goes into this catalytic converter. And then that's one that attaches to the pipe that then goes out to the muffler. So, two bolts here, uh, two bolts there, and those are the ones that are 15 millimeters. Uh, the ones that attach the Y piece to the other catalytic converters, as I said, are 13 millimeters. Now, if we can get under here. As where the Y piece goes up into the back catalytic converter, that's the one that's going to be uh, tricky and could be hard to get into. Uh, it's kind of behind some stuff. Um, I have a feeling that's going to be the piece that makes this job longer than it should be. But uh, we'll see when all said and done. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're fixing. Um, like I said, I could have replaced just that one um, and been done with it. But the car that's 10 years old and 145,000 miles on it, it could be only a matter of time. Before they go bad, and I have an inspection to get done this month. It's January, so I have about a week and a half left to get an inspection. Not even. And um, catalytic converters and oxygen sensors are something that have to work to pass emissions. So if I can fix this now and save that money, it's one less thing to worry about during inspection. Um, and also... Um, one last thing about the car here. Um, I also bought some six-ton jacks. Um, these cars, the Outlook, the Acadia's Traverses, um, they're rated without passengers, without cargo. I think they're rated somewhere around 5,000 pounds, uh, plus or minus 100. Um, uh, so I could have went with three tons, um, but I really wanted to make sure that this was up and sturdy and safe. I spent a little extra, got the six tons. Um, I also saw this online. I saw someone do this and I thought it was pretty neat. Um, cut up some boards. Uh, these are two by twelves, um, three pieces. I screwed them together and I even put some wheel chalks on here just for uh, extra safety. Just to have a little bit of extra safety under these front wheels in case for some odd reason one of these kicked out um, and this car drops, it's not gonna drop far. Um, and even if I'm under it, yeah, I'll still be safe and the car will still be up high enough that uh, nothing will fall on you. You're under a car like this with this weight doing work. You need to make sure you're safe. And if that means spending some extra time preparing, extra heavy-duty jacks, um, whatever it takes to prepare to make sure that you're going to be safe under there, do it. Um, it's your life. Um and you want to come out of this alive and happy that you completed the job. So uh, this car is very sturdy. I've grabbed it and pushed it and shaked it. And this it's not going anywhere. So we are good. Um, I'm not going to film me doing the work. I just kind of wanted to go over what I'm doing, where everything's at, uh, and the tools you'll need. Um, I'm probably going to come back and make a part two video. Um, just to kind of show you the end result, let you know um, how it went, how long it took, 
um, any obstacles, uh, any issues, um, just to give you an idea of what you need to prepare for if you want to do this on your own and uh, save a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so I'll come back when everything's all done, let you know how it went, and uh, we'll see you later.